Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on wherever you are. Welcome to this IHE Delft Alumni Online Seminar. This is part of our Alumni Online Seminar series where we hear interesting insights uh, from our community. Today, we have the privilege to hear from Chopran Ahmed, who graduated from IIT Delft with an MSE in Water and Sustainable Development exactly one month ago. So she's a new and very welcome member in our alumni family. As so many other IIT Delft students, Kofran had made impressive achievements already before she came to Delft. She has a Bachelor's of Science in Chemical Engineering from Khartoum University. Her studies there earned her an award for best academic performance and best graduation project in the chemical engineering department. She's still involved in Khartoum University as a teaching assistant in the chemical engineering department. In 2019, she was a research assistant in the university's materials and nanotechnology research center. Her experience also includes serving as a production planner in the Dal factory for gum Arabic and working as a math teacher. At IHE Doubt, she excelled as a student in the first class taking the new one-year MSc in Water and Sustainable Development. And today we will have the pleasure to hear her talk about her thesis work and results. Her thesis is available in the IH repository. So if you want to know more, you can read it all there. She's also working on a paper on the thesis. In addition, Hofran is one of the photos adorning our latest uh, education and training guide. She's right here, um, which is a really nice publication. If you want some mail to you so you can distribute them to interested people, drop us an email at communication at unihe.org, stating your address and how many copies you want. There's, of course, also an online version. During the seminar, please type your questions in the chat box and we'll pose as many of them as possible to Hofran at the end of the, her presentation. So over to you, Hofran, the floor is yours. Thank you, Susanna, for the kind words. I am muted, but it still, it doesn't help. So thank you, Susanna, so much for your kind words. And it's really my pleasure today to present my work about evaluating the sediment trap efficiency of the guard and its impact on downstream uh, sedimentation rate in Rosario's reservoir. So first, I will start by introducing my study area, which is uh, the Blue Nile. It is a transboundary river between Ethiopia and Sudan, and it originates from uh, Tana Lake. And as many of you now, it is ex uh, as many of you now know that it is experiencing new transformation due to the construction of the uh, GERD, the largest hydropower dam in Africa, with 145 uh, gr gravity dam. Together, the gravity dam and the saddle dam will provide a total capacity of 73 billion cubic meter. About 130 meters downstream, we have a Rosaris Reservoir, which is in terms of volume, it is 10, uh, it is 10 times smaller than the GERD. And here I can show you the confluence of the blue and the white Nile in Khartoum. And here I might ask you a question, which one is, do you think is the blue Nile? So we have you Sudan here, and I think you have never visited Sudan before, right? Not no. yet, I really hope to go one, one, one day. So, so which one is the blue and which one is the white? That's the question. Yeah, uh, the one in the left or the one in the right, in the right is the uh, blue Nile, what do you think? Well, uh, the left one is darker, so I will say that is the Blue Nile. Okay, 
And this is typically what the Sudanese thinks. The Sudanese people give the name for the Blue Nile, blue, because it is uh, like from the, our context, we wherever the things is dark, we call it blue azrek. So from here, uh, this is why we call the Blue Nile the blue, because it is more turbid, more dark, and you can compare it with the White Nile here, that's much clearer and clean. Uh, that was a quick introduction for my study area, but the problem is that first, the Blue Nile River, as I've said, uh, has a very high sediment load, and that was causing really se a serious problem downstream, like the Rosaris Reservoir, for example, lost one third of its capacity because of the sedimentation. In uh, Jazeera Scheme, which is the, one of the largest uh, irrigation scheme in Africa, 80% uh, of the maintenance cost every year goes to the sediment removal. And the problem is growing. There is an increasing trend in the sediment yield of the Blue Nile, as stated by many studies. And now the construction and the feeling of the guard is expected to have a significant implication for the water resources and the sediment balance of the Blue Nile. Already the Hydraulic Research Center in Sudan uh, reported a significant reduction in the sediment uh, load downstream after the start of the feeling of the bird. And this is also might cause a problem such, uh, such as the erosion, uh, soil fertility decline, and other threats for the organic uh, organism or the aquatic animals, sorry. Uh, but also it can have a consequences on the reservoirs themselves. Uh, the guard is ex the capacity of the guard is expected uh, to decrease over time, while for the downstream uh, dams, uh, the uh, the sedimentation rate will be slower. And here there is a very limited number of research uh, addressing this issue, the sedimentation of the guard and its impact on the downstream uh, dams. And this is going to be the research problem uh, or the research gap that I will fill with my findings. Sorry for the, some technical issue. So uh, for the research objective, my research objective was first to estimate the dynamic seasonal and annual trap efficiency of the GERD. And uh, I mean by the trap efficiency, the percentage of the sediment, uh, the incoming the sediment that will be trapped in the reservoir. The second objective is to investigate how the Rosaris Reservoir trap efficiency uh, will vary and the sedimentation rate of it will vary in response to the reduced sediment influenced by the co uh, by the decrease in the sediment uh, caused by the operation of the GERD. So the timeline of my study, as you can see here, uh, first in 2011, uh, the construction of the GERD started. One year later, Rosaris was heightened by 10 uh, uh, meters. And in 2020, the feeling of the GERD started. So to address my study objective, I started first by collecting data from the station, uh, the nearest station to the GERD shown in the red color here. And then I consider two cases. First, the first case is that the sediment of the Blue Nile going directly to Rosaris Reservoir. And I studied the sedimentation of the, of the Rosaris in this case. And the second case, as I assume that the sediment of the Blue Nile will go first to the GERD, and then the release from the GERD will go to the Rosaris. And at last, I compare the results.
sorry again, I have some technical issue. Uh, so let us start again. I think we'll stop in the research methodology. My research in methodology involved first Uh, so my research methodology involved first data collection, screening, gap filling, uh, and at the end I had a record of about 40 years of discharge data and much shorter uh, reports of the sediment, I think like about nine years. Then we decided to use a data-driven model to extend the, uh, the links of the, uh, of the sediment data. Then I used that 3D model for uh, calculating the velocity across the reservoir. And then I used this result to divide the reservoir into compartments and studying then the uh, sedimentation in each compartment. At last, I developed the Python code to simulate the reservoir sedimentation using uh, the empirical formulas for the trap efficiency. And for the empirical formula, we have many empirical formula for the trap efficiency calculation. I choose two, uh, two charger and tan. Charger formula is the function in the of the uh, capacity and the inflow, uh, while tan considering more characteristic about the sediment, like the particle size, the settling velocity, besides the, uh, the capacity and the inflow. And it also considers the uh, catchment area. But these two formulas, or in general, the empirical equations for the trap efficiency are giving just static values. For a specific condition, you just calculate the trap efficiency in that state. What we did, we tried to add a dynamic aspect for the model by uh, considering the changes in the capacity that uh, may be due to the uh, changes in the operating level because each operating level will have a certain capacity or a specific capacity and also the changes in the capacity due to the uh, accumulation of the uh, sediment because the model was able to track the cumulative deposit and subtract it each time. Uh, besides that, the model was also able to consider the variability of the inflow, the seasonal and the annual variability of the inflow in the trap efficiency uh, calculations. For the results, I will start first with the data-driven model. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, first we had uh, long records for discharge and short records for the sediment. So first we tried to use the discharge uh, to calculate the sediment using the rating curve but we had a very low uh, correlation coefficient and it is well known that the rating curve uh, for calculating the sediment from the discharge usually of overestimating the sediment values. So what we did, we tried to consider another input, which is the precipitation data. We downloaded the CHIRP's precipitation data for the study uh, period, and then we use it together with the discharge to estimate the uh, sediment. Uh, and uh, for the model, we used artificial neural network. Um, and then we train the model given the data sets of the discharge, the precipitation, and the sediment. We, uh, we trained the model. And uh, given this set, it, it was trying to get a relationship between these uh, three parameters. And, uh, and then after the training, we use some data for the testing to validate the model. After the validation, we had a validated model that can receive the discharge and the precipitation and give us the sediment. Uh, by that, we were able to create a record of sediment for 37 years as a combination of measured value and predicted value by the uh, model. We divided the data into 70%, I mean the historical data, the measured data, into 70% for training and 30% for testing. And the results of the model was able to capture the increase of the sediment uh, yield of the Blue Nile as stated by many studies. Then for the 3D model, uh, we use it to create the velocity map 
for the reservoir, and that allow us to identify where are the areas that has a high probability for the this sediment deposition, like this one in the dark blue, which is the very uh, low uh, low values of the flow velocity. And uh, the velocity map also enable us to divide the reservoir into compartments, as we can see here, and then study the uh, sedimentation in each compartment separately, which is the recommended approach banned by uh, Ryan to study the sedimentation in a large scale reservoir. And then for the uh, model, the Bison model for uh, simulating the reservoir sedimentation, we applied first for uh, Rosaris to validate the model since we have some bathymetric survey. And we divided the validation into two periods, the 19th and the 20th. Uh, because we expected in the 19s, the model might have a higher uncertainty because it used the data-driven model as the input, and the data-driven model during this period doesn't have any uh, training data. Uh, in general, the model was able to capture the decrease in the uh, capacity of the reserves reservoir over time, but as expected in the first period, the model underestimates the sedimentation in a Rosaris reservoir, while in the second period, it was giving more accurate results. Then to study the seasonal trap efficiency of the GERD, uh, we applied the model for 37 years uh, using 10 days time step. Uh, and we consider two operating scenario. Uh, since there is no agreement yet on the operation of the GERD, we consider one scenario of uh, maximizing hydropower from literature, which is the second scenario, uh, as you can see it here in the dashed line. And uh, the, uh, the second scenario or scenario one is assuming a constant operating level uh, of uh, 632 which is the mean of this uh, scenario of maximizing hydropower. Uh, then after applying the model for 37 years, uh, we calculated the average uh, value of the trap efficiency for each time step window. And uh, we plotted together with the inflow and the uh, capacity operating capacity of the dump. And that enabled us to have two conversion. The first uh, conversion, how the seasonal trap efficiency uh, respond to the changes in the inflow, which we can see it here uh, in the first formula, charger formula, we can see the lowest trap efficiency value associated with the peak of the inflow. While for the time formula, we can see that the highest values of the trap efficiency uh, is uh, resulted from the highest value of the inflow, which is an opposite uh, response. Uh, for the second comparison, we can compare how the, uh, how the changes in the operating capacity between the two scenarios resulted in different trap efficiency value. Or we can say, in other words, how the uh, trap efficiency formula responded to the changes in the capacity. Uh, we can compare that by seeing the two scenarios in, two, in the two formulas. For charger, for example, you can see the result of scenario one in the dark uh, uh, column and the results of scenario one in each time step was uh, there was a very slight difference by, uh, while in the second formula, we can see that there is significant difference between the uh, two trap efficiency value for each scenario, which is indicating that the time formula is more responsive for the changes in the capacity than the charger formula. Uh, in general, the charger formula indicate, uh, calculate or estimated the um, higher trap efficiency for the girl, 97%. While TAN estimated lower value of 91%. And then for the mean annual trap efficiency uh, of the GERD, what we did, we uh, calculated the average of each year 
or the mean for each year. Uh, and we can see here, uh, this is the result of uh, charges and this is the result of TAN. Um, and, and the dark color for scenario one was the light color for uh, scenario two. In general, we can notice that uh, there is a very slight difference between the two scenarios uh, in post formula. Uh, charges in, in, uh, uh, in general estimated higher values than uh, TAN. And uh, we can see that there is a decline in the trap efficiency value in the uh, in the two formula, which is uh, resulted from the decrease in the capacity over time because of the sedimentation. Then we have the uh, storage capacity, how the storage capacity of the uh, guard will decline over time due to the sedimentation. Uh, the, in uh, the two formulas, we can say estimated the same range between 188 to 200 uh, million cubic meter per year for the GERD. And, uh, and we can see from, uh, 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 from the two graphs that in scenario two, the two formulas almost show the same result. Uh, in general, scenario one has uh, the highest sedimentation rate according to uh, charger, while for TAN, the scenario two will have the highest sedimentation rate. If we can compare the two scenarios using the two formulas. And for the results of the Rosaris Reservoir, we can see here, this is the trap efficiency of the uh, Rosaris with the continuous line in the case of uh, there is no GERD or without GERD. Uh, while I represent the result of uh, the uh, trap efficiency with the GERD with the dotted line. And from the two graphs, we can see that there is the, uh, a slower decline or less sharp decline in the trap efficiency value in the case without the GERD while the, there is a sharp decline in the trap efficiency value in the case of uh, the, uh, the ex without existing or without the GERD. Um, and that's indicate that in the case without uh, the GERD, the uh, Rosaris will have a much slower sedimentation rate. So it will lose its capacity in, uh, uh, in a slower rate than the case without uh, the GERD. And for the annual storage uh, loss, we can see that without the GERD, the uh, Rosaris will have the annual storage rate of 0. Uh, 0.52 in scenario 1 and 0. 0.25 in scenario 2, while with the GERD, the Rosaris will have a much smaller sedimentation uh, uh, average rate average uh, annual storage rate of 0.07 and 0.01. Uh, if we compare the two cases, scenario one and scenario two, in the case of the continuous line, which is representing the state of without the GERD, we can see also there is a significant difference between the two scenarios. Uh, however, they are both considering the state without the GERD. And this is because here we applied the operating rules of uh, a Rosaris Reservoir. Uh, the operating rules of the Rosaris Reservoir is uh, using a, a kind of optimizing the operation to minimize the sedimentation. So during the flood uh, period or the beginning of the flood period, the Rosaris Reservoir will have a minimum operating level until the peak of the sediment passes, uh, and then the uh, Rosaris will start the filling. And usually that happened in September. So we can see that this flushing measure of Rosaris uh, was very effective or highly effective, and it saved about 9% of the reservoir capacity over 37 years of operation. Uh, and as I mentioned before, we were studying the 
uh, sedimentation in the GERD using 11 compartments. And the results show that for the six, uh, for the six first compartments, there will be a considerable decrease in the volume and that we can see it from the decrease in the trap efficiency value uh, in the first six compartment, while in the uh, other compartment, this the volume will stay almost constant. Uh, here, this graph also showing the deposit in the first compartments and the remaining capacity. Uh, and this compartments where we can see the major amount or the majority of the sediment deposition is the upstream, which is uh, suggesting that the GERD might have a kind of delta upstream, while a very low amount of sediment will reach the downside during 37 years of operation. As a conclusion, we can say that um, the long-term average of the trap efficiency value of values for uh, the GERD using charger formula is 97%, ranging from 95 to 99. And using TAM formula, it is going to be about 92, ranging from 89 uh, to uh, 93. And there is also a significant seasonal variability in the trap efficiency value, depending on the variability of the flow and the variability of the operating capacity. And uh, there is also a slight difference between the, the, the values of the trap efficiency of the two scenarios. Uh, in general, post formula estimated similar uh, values for the sedimentation rates and the average annual loss of 0.29% uh, per year. Uh, for Luzeris Reservoir, we can see that the trap efficiency have different ranges uh, with and without the GERD. In general, the uh, values without the GERD is smaller than the values with the GERD. And we can see that the sedimentation rate uh, of a Luzeris Reservoir will decrease significantly uh, with the GERD. Uh, and, and when we compare it with the state of without the GERD, it will decrease in scenario one from 30.8 to 4.7 and in scenario two from 16.1 to 0.1 million ton per year. For the sediment, uh, for the study uh, limitation, first the, uh, the computational scheme that we described is just assuming that the headwater is the only inflow point for both the sediment and the water. And also there was no available data for the bed load. That's why we used uh, the percentage of the bed load and the suspended load from the uh, literature to consider the bed load. Uh, also in the water balance, we didn't consider the evaporation, which is an essential uh, element in the water balance of the reservoirs. Uh, for the sediment particle size, also we assume it to be constant, however, it can vary over time. Uh, for the recommendation of the study, first, we recommend that a sensitivity analysis is necessary, especially uh, with the uh, calculation of the reservoir sedimentation, because it involves many uncertainties in the measurements of the sediment, the measurements of the inflow. Um, and also in the data uh, that we uh, and the, in the data driven model that we used. Exploring more scenarios also will offer more comprehensive understanding on the sedimentation rate and uh, the, its responses to different operating strategy. So at last, I tried just to involve some uh, uh, pictures from our uh, trip to the Blue Nile. Uh, that uh, was in, uh, I think, December 2022. It was a very valuable trip for me. I started with the Jazeera, where they were suffering from the uh, deposition of the sediment in the canal. Uh, we listened to the operator, to the people from the ministry, and uh, how they were doing the sediment uh, removal measures. Also, we listen to the farmers, their fears and their expectation, and they really give me very uh, useful insights. I was really surprised by their understanding of the 
a river and, and they were expressing it in a very simple and it's really also accurate how the river will eat some parts of the uh, lands and how it will accumulate it to another. So I, I really appreciating this because it opened my eyes for, uh, uh, for me, it opened my eyes for many issues that I will never find it in the literature. So at last I want to thank uh, all the people who contributed to this research for my family and for uh, my friend for their continuous support. And that's all from my side. And if you have any questions, then we can proceed. Yes, everyone, um, please uh, type your questions or comments in the chat box so that we can um, have them addressed by Khofran. I can, I, I can um, start with a question that, that I'm a bit curious about. Um, if we zoom out a bit and think of the bigger picture, if your findings lead to application, how will it affect the region? I think many people can benefit from my results. For example, the operating, uh, the operation of a Rosaris is expected to be changed uh, because it was focusing on uh, the sedimentation management and uh, and now they can focus more about meeting the demand downstream or maximizing hydropower because maybe now the sedimentation is not a big issue as the past. And also it can pave a way for another studies uh, for the soil fertility decline, how will, what will happen to the disease skin, uh, lands and so on. And also I think it is important for some social studies because uh, some people in the region downstream, they depending on the sediment for tricks maker, for example, and other uh, economical, uh, yeah, process. Okay, thank you. Let's see if we have anyone who does a question. Oh, yeah, we have Humphrey Camwendo. Uh, was the sediment re regime downstream of the Garrett quickly checked over the proposed period? Does that make sense to you? May I answer that question? May you repeat it again? Okay, let me, um, the question is from Humphrey Kamwendo. Was the sediment regime downstream of Gerd quickly checked over the proposed period? Over the proposed period, there were a continuous measurement of the sediment downstream before and after the construction. And uh, I think I have enough reports for the two periods. So I saw the decline in the sedimentation clearly in the data. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have Desaleng Vorku Ayalev, who wonders, what do you think the GERD? Think about the GERD. Is it a threat or advantage for the Rosaris Reservoir? That's a good question. Uh, I, I don't have the big picture. I only answer the part of the sedimentation, how the sedimentation rate will change, but there are another aspect, for example, erosion and other problems. So I cannot say it will be good or not. I'm just giving what I focused on, what will happen to the sedimentation rate. And for the sedimentation rate, of course, it is good because it will be reduced. But for other aspects, uh, I think we have to get another research. That that's, that's a true scientist's answer, answer to that tricky question. <laughs> so good. good. Um, we move on to Gopak Kumar R, who wonders, how do the alterations in sediment load due to the Gerd construction impact the ecology and environmental dynamics downstream in the Blue Nile Basin? Are there potential consequences for aquatic life, agriculture, and other ecosystems that rely on the sediment flow? Uh, for the aquatic life, I expect a big, some uh, threats because uh, there is a quite change from the, the state uh, before and after. Before the girl, there was a, a, a water with a high turbidity. So the quality of the water will be completely different after when you have a very low level of the sediments. 
So maybe these changes might have uh, uh, some um, uh, some uh, effects or impacts on the aquatic life. For the uh, what the other aspect that you mentioned uh, was potential are the potential consequences for aquatic life, agriculture, and other ecosystems that rely on sediment flow. The agriculture, yes. Uh, but it has two uh, sides for the soil fertility. It will, uh, it might cause some decline in the soil fertility because the sediments uh, also carry some uh, nutrients to the soil, for example, nitrogen and phosphate. Uh, and for the irrigation scheme, when they have some problems with the, the, uh, the sediments in the canal, maybe it would be good because then will might they save uh, the 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 budget for the sediment removal to do other stuff great thank you we have lots of questions coming in here it's great to see and um, Abad Muhammad Ali wants to know he thanks you for the nice presentation which several others have done and I'll share those thank yous with you later glad that people are happy um so, given the significant difference between the two selected equations, Churchill and Tan, what is the criteria of selecting the equation to maximize the reliability of the calculations? Oh, very nice question. <laughs> uh, actually, as I've mentioned before, there are many equations for the trap efficiency over 28 uh, formulas. What we try to do uh, all these equations are empirical, that they were developed from existing data, making correlation with the existing data. So we try to find equations that rely on data for, uh, uh, for the reservoir that, in terms of volume, close to the girth. So then we will avoid using the formula for the range uh, out of the range that was developed for. Uh, for TAM formula in particular, there was two reservoirs. Uh, they were very close in uh, in in the capacity. There were ve two, yeah, I think two, uh, very close to the guard in terms of capacity. So that's why we uh, consider the TAM formula for charger formula. Uh, it has it one of the I think oldest. Uh, trap efficiency formula and uh, it has been applied in many reservoirs before so it has been validated for a large number of reservoirs uh, and one point I think I didn't mention about the TAN TAN equation was validated with 18 reservoirs also and I think one of them was close for the capacity of the guard to the capacity of the guard I think 64 billion cubic meters uh, so it might also, um, I think, give an indication of the uh, accuracy of this uh, formula to estimate the trap efficiency of that range of uh, uh, volumes or capacity. Good. We move on to the next question because they are coming in. What measures, this is from Hari Pandit from Nepal, what measures do you suggest to minimize downstream impact? Uh, unfortunately, I think uh, the girl doesn't have uh, gates for flushing. Um, and I think such uh, suggestion needs to consider many uh, uh, design criteria and also the, visit, the economical visibility. Uh, so uh, I think some there are some uh, measures like uh, Move, uh, there are, I think, uh, some uh, tunnels for the for the sediment removal. Uh, there are many options, but it has to be con it, the the visibility of all these options should be considered to in order to give uh, a good recommendation for such issue. Indeed, and I think that was also like some other questions a little bit beyond your research topic, but I'm glad that, that you ventured in, in giving an answer. Thank you very much for that. We have Nasser Hamid who wants to know, he was very fascinated by your interaction with the farmers, as, as was I. How did you use the information provided by the farmers and to which level did you rely on their information in the research? Um. 
unfortunately i didn't uh, cover the social aspect but uh, when I was in Sudan at that period, I was trying to put the objective of my research. So the views and the, uh, the interviews with the farmers and also with the operators of uh, Rosaris uh, helped me to define my research objective mainly, but unfortunately they were not considered as the source of data, but it was kind of analyzing the problem. Okay, thank you for that. We have Magali Kusipuma Ayuka. Uh, also, thank you for your presentation. You did not have a measurement bed load based on it. Which empirical equation did you use to? And I have to, it doesn't really show that I have to. Oh, which empirical equation did you use to split the percentage of bed load and suspension material? Did you analyze the longitudinal position behind the dam? Which pattern did it have? Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, I depend on the literature because there are some reports about the sediment in the Blue Nile, the percentage of the suspended and the bed load. Uh, like they, they specify that the total load, about 80% of it is suspended load and 20% uh, of it is the bed load. So I use this percentage just to estimate the amount of the bed load from the suspended load. Great, thank you. Uh, we have some comments asking about sedimentation and how that will affect things. And let's see if this is something you can answer. Emmanuel Masave wants to know after how many years the level of sedimentation will be unbearable. And unbearable might not be a scientific term, but I think we get what he means. Unbearable, like bearable. Um, unbearable as in, we just can't take it anymore. It's too much. After, after, how, after how many years will it be a significant problem? Uh, I think even during this study period it was significant, uh, but uh, we had estimated that the useful life of the guard will be over 600, uh, uh, I think 600 years, I'm not uh, really sure about the number, uh, but even I think during this period, the 37 year, uh, years of uh, study, there was a significant decrease in the uh, in the uh, storage of the GERD is almost, I think, about 10%. So I think it is a significant number. Yes, thank you. And um, we have David Jarso in the same vein there, who wonders about your recommendations regarding the sedimentation issue. As I mentioned before, it is uh, another uh, whole study should be done in order to give a good or solid recommendation for this part. That is that is uh, true, a very scientific answer. So uh, we have more question here on the sedimentation. Ali Ahmed wants, oops, now uh, Ali Ahmed, I lost his comment, here it is. How is the effect of the reduced sedimentation on the downstream agricultural plants, including soil fertility? Again, this might be beyond your remit, yeah. but... As, as I just said, it will, my, my study will just pave the way for other studies in this uh, field of the soil fertility. Thank you. We've also had several uh, several commenters asking for your work, and I have sent posted the link to the uh, whole uh, thesis, which is in, in the IHL IH IH repository, and you have a direct link in the comments box to that. And we will always, also, as usual, always post the recording of the seminar on YouTube and make it available on the IHC alumni page. Um, do we have any more questions? We have lots of thank you, well done coming in into the comments. Have I missed any questions? If I have, please alert me in the comments box. I think we have 
perhaps now answered all the questions. Um, so we're ready to conclude. Um, thank you very much for a fascinating presentation. Do you want to offer some concluding words, perhaps explain what you're working on now? Uh, uh, now yeah, um, I'm going to define more my results and uh, write a scientific article or paper from my findings uh, soon. So hopefully we'll find it published somewhere if you need more details. So yeah. And uh, I'm also now focusing more on the water harvesting, water treatment, uh, and uh, the sedimentation issue is, I think, uh, adding added a lot for my uh, experience, uh, and uh, I think it it the the practical value of the research gives me motivation to continue and and try to find any way to improve the results. So, uh, and I think in our region we need to work on such uh, kind of research that can give evidence based recommendation uh, for the dam operators or for other uh, other areas. Indeed. Great. So with that, let's conclude our seminar. Thank you so much, Hofra. This has been so interesting. We've all learned a lot. And we will put it online eventually um, and stay tuned for the next seminar. We'll let you know when that comes up. Thank you. Bye-bye.